For the 34th Sunday in Ordinary Time, the church celebrates Jesus Christ, King of the Universe, the solemnity that caps off our year. And understanding the, the solemnity, the feast day, uh, I think a quick history lesson is almost uh, valuable. So you think about the history of the Western world uh, throughout uh, the, the years of Christianity. And uh, largely, the, uh, you know, the church and the leadership of, of state governments were, uh, were, were largely intertwined. And by the time we get to the, you know, say 16, 17, 1800s, uh, you know, 19, even into the 1900s, you know, you've got this, this era where a lot of people are seeing, you know, strife and oppression and, and issues. And, you know, sometimes, you know, those were cases uh, of, um, you know, a real, um, you, you know, poor cooperation or, or evil making its way into the government and, you know, united with the church. I mean, there were some, there were some actual issues at times. But largely, you know, people began to, to see, you know, problems in government and the fact that God was intertwined there and uh, they, they, had, they had really lost faith uh, in God. And they said, okay, well, we've got all these problems. Uh, we can probably get rid of the issues if we take God out of the question. You know, in a lot of the revolutions uh, of the 1800s, especially, you know, into the early 1900s were, were an attempt to expel God uh, from leadership of nations and uh, certainly hasn't, uh, you, you know, uh, helped anything by any means. Uh, we still have the same issues and, and even worse in many places um, when God has been taken out of leadership in, in government. But in the, uh, in, in about 1925, I think, was when uh, Pope Pius XI instituted the feast and and he was looking around the room the, the room yeah the room of the world and uh recognizing after uh world war one you know like things are only escalated escalating in terms of you know violence and issues between nations and within he said we need to really all look back to uh, our faith and uh, faith in jesus christ to, to right the ship if you will and uh you know he felt that it was an opportunity you know to unite the world again around uh, faith in Christ and uh, you know again you take the last almost hundred years since the institution of the solemnity and, it, and we haven't exactly eradicated all of the issues uh, in in the Western world in fact you know to a certain degree you know things continue to decline uh, but you know when you stop and think about it and understand you know the reality of the peace that Jesus brings about in your own life you know you do recognize that you know if we were to rally around you know faith in Jesus and really allow you know Christ uh, Christ's plan uh, to transform our lives radically you know then uh, then we see the reality of the peace that would come about uh, in the world you know true pre peace can only be found in the unity of faith in Jesus Christ so you know to take those things you know as the background for looking at the readings you know the first reading we see the anointing of King David um, as a 30 year old man to lead the uh, to lead the Israelites so um, you know we see something of Christ in the anointing of King David you know in the in the in the psalm you know we hear about all the tribes of uh, of Israel marching up to the house of the Lord to worship him you know in some ways collectively you know draws us you know as a people uh, up to the Lord to worship him together you know seeking the peace that only he can bring you know as as the king of the universe what does he do you know well at our baptism and in our, our life with him Jesus well God the Father delivers us uh, through Jesus, you know, from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, you know, and he reigns over that kingdom of light. And, and in the gospel reading as well, we hear the, uh, you know, the, the two different uh, views of, of Jesus as, as king, the mockery uh, of the world, uh, you know, if, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself, you know. And yet, as Jesus does, he brings that peace to the, uh, the good thief, if you will, uh, in promising that uh, in his conversion, you know, uh, in his desire to be with the one true king, that he will have a place uh, today in paradise uh, with Jesus. So, you know, the way that Jesus reigns is often just so contrary to the ways of the world that I don't think people really give it a chance, you know, and it actually reminds me uh, of, uh, of a line, I think it was uh, G.K. Chesterton who said, 
uh, at one point that, uh, you know, Christianity hasn't been tried and found wanting. Uh, it's been found hard and left untried. And I think largely that's been the issue uh, throughout the history of Christianity in the world is it isn't so much that, you know, God has failed us. It's that, you know, God's way actually is a challenge uh, and we just don't give it a fair shake. So uh, today on this, uh, or this weekend on this feast of uh, Christ, the King of the universe, you know, we ask him to take up his rightful place in our own hearts. That is his peace, the peace of his kingdom might reign in us so we might bring that same peace to the whole world.